this is um, Pixie doing another video. But the eye's not too too tired. I'll probably meditate soon. So I got this. This is my um, these are the tiger eyes. They do have a kind of way of looking a kind of golden. They might make me more kind of more active and get on with stuff, I guess. And there's about a hundred and I haven't bothered to count them to be honest. They told me there's a hundred and eight beads or so or something. It's more in keeping with like a Buddhist thing. If you add the the one and the one and the eight together, you get nine. And nine's quite a symbol of co sign of completion. It seems like it's numerology, even though some people don't believe in it. It's all there. <laughs> it's like the sixes being in groups of six, or there's um. It's more the cabal on that side of things. I was watching an interesting video actually. He said about how Putin bro did a break away from the system, and that they have these two sides. I mean, I don't think they're fully separate. It's, it's um, puppetry basically. So you've got two different sides, and what happens is they you get two sides against each other, and then a third one comes in to become acted like the mediator, and it's it's a divide and conquer. So they're divided. This comes in and gives them some sort of peace and control. But inserts the system in there as well, and so it brings them under the same roof basically, and and that's what's happened across the world and um, forever, and that's why you got things like, you know, like you got the left and the right in America. Nobody actually argues about the um, policies. They they talk about actually they just go on about this party and that party, and it's it's just like reds and blues and so on. Republicans and Democrats. It's just this system of playing off against each other. But we've already got the third in the third world in, in the UK. And I watched this other thing about Illuminati and it covered um it's something like hol holographic disclosure was the site. And I kinda of just listened to it yesterday and it was six years ago. And it was talking about um demonetization of um, the West. Um and it's was yeah, it had lots of things. They weren't a hundred percent true, but they they are fairly true today. It talked about the Bush's idea of getting the UN UN to come in and um basically take over the place because they're exporting their war machine abroad and so another force comes in to stabilise it. It could be if the corona goes through the roof, you might get what you call these peacekeepers because you see them on TV, like America's and the UN went to sort of Africa, was doing stuff over there. They do the same in other countries as well and it would probably surprise them, especially if there's this sort of civil war. Because there is at the moment, all you've got to do is pump guns on the streets or get them into the protesters' hands. Find, you know, basically if they're kitted up the same as the police, the police have to raise the, the bar to manage the situation. I mean, they're doing quite well so far, but it doesn't take a lot. And there's just some nasty um, things I see people just smashing up cars. They're what you call anti-black matters, because they, they're making things worse for black people. And they also don't represent them either, at all. There's nothing culturally about them. They're just like, oh, they're, they're repressed. Oh, yeah, well, if there's a communist system, it'd be much better. Really? <laughs> but then again, it's just another system. And it's really who's leading that as well. But if you're, if you're leading it through violence, basically judge, like you judge a person, judge upon their actions. And that's the truth for um, organisations. If they go around hurting people, then it doesn't matter how good they might pretend they are. They still are. That's the the the, the product, the byproduct of their um, behaviour, and that's the same for a lot of things. And it's just kind of, it, it uh, any group needs to have at some point a self reflection of what they are. And the reason people cover themselves up is because they're ashamed of their actions. Really, they're going off and being, um, you know, it's gonna, basically it's also going to attract psychopaths. You're going to get people that are going to join in because they can think, oh, I can commit violence and hide in the hide in the group. And there's at least about. Um, 5% of the population, maybe 10%, there's sociopaths as well, and a lot of people fall into that spectrum. And you can see, it. sometimes you can see the traits in yourself. It's a bit like um, being in the care game, and what I do, the care work, it's kind of bizarre, some of the stuff I have to do, and I think it's a bit uh, it's a bit sociopathic sort of stuff, you know, you know it's about personal care and other things. But it's a bit weird as well, so it's um, it's... Like I say, this, and then you kind of get this kind of like, um, I guess it's the power over someone. You get um, a kind of, this is what you need to keep, keep your mind centralised and healthy, because there's vulnerable people that you're supporting, and you could easily take advantage of them. Not you would, but you're aware you could, and that's that awareness, and it's like, well, you could, but you're not going to. 
So that's 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 very much. And I also hear things about like mental health. They should they should really talk about mental fitness, about getting your mind in a more healthier state. And that's pretty much for lockdown. Not worried about how bad it could be if you don't do something. How healthy you could make it be so that you get the the strongest possible outcome. So I, I'm more for mental fitness because I think if we talk about mental health, people think I've got a problem that I've got to keep fighting against, like depression for lockdown or, or whatever, losing your job or something. Basically, you're going to go through phases of mental changes and it's basically how well you manage them changes and bounce back is, is really what's key. Um, so yeah, and then that goes back to goes back to this thing. I've got this as well. This is um attached. Let's get off. <laughs> it's trying to attack me. No, it's not. Uh, there we go. So it's um it's quite cute actually. They put it in a little container, and it's um a bloodstone. Now I thought bloodstones were magnetic, but it's got um he hematite deposits in it but it's um, like a green type of jade or something. So it's not really magnetic, but I can see there's bits of red in it. And it kind of, what it does is it, it let's see, I think yeah, it's more of a grounding, and it has affected my sort of character. Like I come in, someone said, you're serious? And I think, um, hmm, maybe, I don't know, just, I don't always joke and laugh around, but I felt like my energy has been different as well, more, Focusing on the body rather than projecting outwards. And these kind of beads are quite good, and I've also got my, I've got a thing on as well. It's my little Buddhist thing. We got um, a little Buddha's head on it as well. And what did I do? I had a kind of meditation. I focused on the sun because I think that it played a key role. And there was this connection with why people wear crowns and they're like this, like the rays. Rays projecting from that light. And um, the feedback I kind of got is that there was a time when people worshipped things in nature as a kind of... Um, they praised it. And they didn't, it wasn't the case they didn't believe there was another thing else outside of that. But it was, it was something reflective of themselves, the praise of creation of things. And... Um, as a connection to a higher force. I mean, they didn't, they didn't really classify it, particularly as a god or, or whatever. They had their own tribal beliefs on that. But um, they used to worship things like nature, and they used to worship things like the sun as well, and, and stuff like that, because it gave them life. So that's why they gave praise to it. And um, what happened is that you had uh, the Watchers, which I don't even think, that they might even be from this universe, to be honest, let alone from a different place, because I guess the scripture says that it's in from heaven from heavens or something like that from heavens so a heaven from heavens so um are they talking about the world being a heaven and from the heavens like uh the other ones that are out there are they making reference to another universe maybe universes from universe i mean it, there's no way i can explain it to a person so we kind of said well that's that's your heaven out there and well i'm from a heaven out there so um but anyway i think they, they ended up corrupting some of the beliefs of the humans. We may have already had certain beliefs anyway, but they they became um, the avatars for God, and so now God becomes something else, and so you worshipped these beings, watchers that came down, and um, and then they've they've basically um, culturally changed us to the, forever, basically, and whether they've been involved in changing us genetically, you know, the story of Adam and Eve that fits into this sort of. Um, what they call the ancient astronaut theories, how that fits in. I mean, it probably does, to be honest. So, um, easily fits in quite well. Um, and so, at the moment, I'm looking at different scriptures, different cultures. So, I've got the, the Torah, I've got the, the Quran to pick through, and at some point, the Bible as well. And it's kind of making sense of things and where they fit. And if it's kind of a way, to, an abstract way to explain another story. I mean, there's older books that went into the Bible that were there, sort of um, Book of Enoch and so on, of influences that are in there. And um, it's assuming that it's it's their facts, but fits their uh, parameters in that period of time. And that's why it's sort of, you know, an abstract construction. But also, it's cleverly written in that way they put try, people try to put knowledge inside it, like things like numbers and all sorts of things. 
So sometimes when it keeps on repeating sevens, seven sisters, seven this, seven that, it's making reference to the, the seven as something else, as some kind of a holy key maybe or something, or potentially destructive as well. So if they mention a mention of things like devils um, and stuff like that. Uh, anything else going on? That's it, really. <laughs> That's it. That's all there is. So what I'm going to do now is probably just kind of a meditation. Um, I can feel a sort of tingly sensation. That's what it feels like. So I'm well switched on that. I did see something else with to do with meditation and the change in the brainwave states and other things. And that was quite fascinating. But they haven't really... They, I mean, they've just touched the tip of the iceberg, really. Um, basically, it's science looking for evidence to support benefits of meditation and what it is and how they can use it and ideally they probably want to artificially create it without using the meditation techniques which is kind of cheating really um, a little bit um, and then also it's a healing tool and, and what else could be done or controlling pain and the other things that are probably open there as well anyways please sign up for the video have a great one and speak to you soon bye